Okay, this is Mark, and so I'm going to talk about subtraction and zero score, something that is kind of hard to find right now on YouTube in terms of tutorials. Um, and I wanted to make an eyeball and subtract an iris and had a really hard time finding information on how to do that um, because ZBrush seems to handle things slightly differently with DynaMesh. Um, they use DynaMesh to subtract. And so uh, we are going to use DynaMesh as well, but I want to show you guys uh, how you get this to look actually at least fairly decent because with ZBrush Core you can't do a lot of hard surface modeling techniques and get nice sharp edges. So um, what I discovered is that the uh, first thing you want to do is you want to go to your geometry, go to DynaMesh, and for this the higher the resolution you select on your object initially the better the results will be. Um, and that goes both for the, the object that you use to remove the negative space width and the object itself. So if I were to uh, create an object and subtract it from this, it would be very jagged. So maybe I can sort of uh, show that. So I'm going to click on DynaMesh and I'm going to use our low resolution. Let's try uh, 64. I'm going to click DynaMesh and you'll see that everything changes. So the squares and everything kind of uh, they're a little bit more wavy, less even, and it's not really as clean looking. So we're going to go into, uh, let's see here, we're going to go to our subtool, which you can also select from the top as well, but we're just going to go here because it's uh, the default. And so we're going to go to append. So I'm going to click append. And these are the objects you can use as uh, to subtract space from your initial object. Uh, I'm sure the terms I'm using are not exactly uh, perfect because I'm a traditional sculptor. I don't know all the, the terms yet. Uh, still learning this program. But uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go click on brush and click on our transpose tool. And we're going to move that object away from, uh, oops, first we've got to select the object. Select it here under sub, sub tool and then move it off to the side and you'll notice that it's very clean it's got lots and lots of uh, squares and they're all uh, very even across the entire surface <clears throat> so uh, now if I were to use this and subtract it from this side here it wouldn't be clean because there's not a very large number of, uh, of squares now in our polysphere 3, 3D here the initial one that we used uh, I used a very low re resolution of 64, and so I'm assuming that's probably about you know close to what we're using. Um, but the way this is, this works is that I'm going to select my um, this is called the PM 3D Sphere 3D, which I added. I'm going to make sure that I'm clicking on this here, which is the subtraction uh, icon, I guess they call it. And so you click on that, and then you want to click on merge and then merge down click OK and then I'm pressing the control key and then I'm just using DynaMesh so I'm going to click control once and it disappears and now you can see how we have all these jagged lines everywhere on our fear and it looks horrible right so uh, ZBrush Core is really not not so great at that. So uh, what I can show you guys, one of the tricks is you go to clay polish, click on clay polish, and just using the default settings that are there, I'm going to click it, and you'll see that it has cleaned it up a bit. But there's still like these shark teeth things everywhere on the surface, which looks like garbage, right? So we don't want that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here, going to click, uh, I clicked control Z to just go back in time there through history. And so I'm going to go back into, uh, make sure that my sub tool is selected here, which is the sphere. And uh, there's nothing else to select, I guess, but, um, and then we're going to go back to geometry and go back to DynaMesh. And now I'm going to select a resolution of about 300 or 312, 312 is fine. So I'm going to click control and drag off to the side. And so DynaMesh will then 
take the sphere and add a lot more squares to it. Now it didn't work because I need to alter it in some way, which is kind of stupid, but that's, that's the way it's programmed, I guess. So I'm going to just use the move tool and just move this out just a hair. And then re-click control and drag out here again. And so now there's a lot more squares. You can see we can zoom in really far and the resolution is, is quite nice now. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the polyframe option here and look at the sphere. And so it's not really super perfect smooth. It's not too bad. We can select uh, our wax here, you know, different materials, chrome. You can sort of see how the surface would, would look like if you were to, for example, 3D print this or something. So the resolution is pretty good. And so I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to click Append, select the Sphere 3D again, and I'm going to move it by using the Transpose tool. Now if I click the polyframe again, oh, sorry, I didn't have the right one selected. <laughs> Keep doing that. So um, make sure this is visible. So I'm going to move it out to the side. And you'll notice that, again, the resolution is still low. So I'm going to uh, click on the clay here just to get rid of that move or transpose tool. And I'm going to go back to Dynamesh. So I'm going to click Dynamesh, but I'm going to select a, actually a, the same 312 resolution first. Click Dynamesh, see if it works. Now I didn't have to alter the sphere for it to work this time. So I don't really know why ZBrush works like that, but and I'm also going to use the transpose tool and I'm going to, let's say, assume that we're making like an iris or something. And I'm going to scale it down. And let's just pretend that this will be an iris. And we want to subtract that space. So you can see how that looks, where it is, make sure it looks like it in the right place. And again, we want to go to our subtool and do the same thing. We want to make sure that the second little icon on here, there's you know, there's like a draw, there's like, you know, this is, I think, like you merge the two, two or something, and this one is uh, subtract, and this is, I think, adding. Um, I'm still learning these things, but you want to click the second one. Okay. Then you want to go down to merge. Now I can't merge down because I had the wrong one selected. So I had to so make sure I had the initial sphere selected up top. Then I want to click on merge down. Click OK. Then again, what we want to do is we want to click Control off to the side, hold it in, drag, and release. All right. So as you can see, using a higher resolution, you get less jagged lines around the edge of your, your model. So again, with uh, ZBrush Core, the hard surface modeling is not the same as ZBrush, and they have a lot more options in the full version of ZBrush. But we can clean this up, and again, what we want to do is go back to Clay Polish. I'm just using the default settings. I'm going to click it once, and there it is. It's actually pretty good. It's uh, it's pretty clean, but we can fix some of that. And the way to do that is you want to make sure that you have your line fill polyframe selected. You can either do that, or you can, if you have, for example, this is the DJ Comic Lizard material. Um, some of the different materials will actually show the polyframe like this. So it doesn't actually matter what you want to do. You can use either or. And then you want to kind of rotate your model around and see where there's these waves. So we're going to go up here to our brushes and select the Move tool. And I'm going to press S once. And then I'm going to make sure that my draw size is very small. OK, so I'm going to zoom in and try to 
center our wavy parts. And then you'll notice that by using the move tool with the small draw size, you'll get just like these little uh, little dots, a red dot right at the vertices here. And we can move that. We can actually try to straighten this stuff up a little bit. And this doesn't always work. And sometimes when you try this, you can uh, sample. I'm going to zoom in. So this one I want to move inward, right? So as I move it, it moves very, very slowly, extremely slowly. I'm like dragging it across my screen, and it's barely moving. Um, so sometimes these move really quickly, sometimes they don't. I don't really know why that is. Um, but it's kind of, you know, you can kind of clean it up a little bit, a little bit more than it was. And you can't really get in there and do this to a very high degree, but you can make it look a little bit nicer that way. So that's just some of the ways you can sort of uh, make a hollow space and clean up your sculpture. All right, thanks for watching.